Low-key episode five, science fiction just got done airing on Disney+. Plus. It's available right now. And I did my theory slash speculation video a few days ago. And some of what I said did indeed come true. So the story does indeed continue. Let's talk about it. So episode four had that crazy cliffhanger where the loom exploded and it signaled the end of the TVA. And like I said in my theory video, Loki's time slipping ability came back. So he ends up time slipping to various branch timelines and he tries to run into people that were in the TVA because what happened was they were all sent back to their quote unquote regular lives. So you have B-15 as like a nurse or a doctor. You've got OB as a science fiction writer who is also a physicist. Uh, so that theory that was going around about him being AI and him being created by he who remains is not true. I mean, he's probably been at the TVA for a long time. He's probably one of the first people to ever get to the TVA. But the idea of him being like an AI or a robot or something, that is not the case. You also have Mobius, who we find out worked at a jet ski shop, which was in one of the early trailers. Uh, you see Loki going there. He's also a single father of two kids. And Loki is basically trying to go through time and trying to find them. And what ends up happening, long story short, is when he sees OB, you know, OB is a scientist, so OB does understand time and physics, physics and things like that. And he gives OB the TVA handbook, which seems to be a very important item because with the TVA handbook, both Victor Timely and OB were able to just take that handbook and create magic, you know, almost literally. So what ends up happening is Loki can't control the time slipping, but he does end up going to Sylvie at the McDonald's in that branch timeline, and Sylvie's the only one that remembers. Now, I'm not entirely sure as to why Sylvie is the only one that remembers, maybe because she was already kind of a time bandit in season one. She was already kind of a variance that to be t removed. And if you remember, there was that whole situation with Renslayer and her where in season one where Renslayer would not tell her what her real backstory was. Now, that's something I just realized as I'm recording this. Renslayer was not in this episode. I think a lot of us thought that we would see her at the end of time. Uh, we would see her there, maybe with the other low keys, but that was not done in this episode. This was a 40-minute episode uh, focused primarily on Loki trying to reunite his friends from the TVA, which he is able to do. But at one point, after having a conversation with Sylvie, Loki pretty much wants to let them go back to their timeline. His whole mentality is he wants to have them go back to their timeline and resume their life because Sylvie says that now they're able to go back to their lives. But Loki's counter argument is, well, the problem is that they originally didn't have a choice and now they do have a choice, but the choice that they're making was to go along with Loki. Now the issue that ends up happening is Sylvie goes to like a record store to listen to music and literally time begins to spaghettify. It's sort of like what happens in Loki um, episode four, season two, sort of like that, where um, like everything basically like falls apart like Victor Timely, but reality starts to spaghettify. And we actually see that happen with Loki. It's not just that there's a gazillion branch timelines, but the timelines are actually dying. The multiverse is dying. This is what Kang the Conqueror said. This is what Kang the Conqueror said in Ant-Man. You know, tons of incursions, the multiverse is dying. You know, that's what he's talking about. That And that's probably due to not just the loom being destroyed, but also whatever the other Kangs, the Kang Dynasty, the Council of Kangs, has been doing to create more and more branches by manipulating time travel. So, it is Sylvie who ends up going back to Loki and who ends up um, using her temp pad to, who ends up telling him, like, okay, we have to do something. Everything spaghettifies around him, but then 
Loki realizes that he's able to control. He is now able to control his time slipping because he goes back to a few minutes prior to that happening. And then basically he says, I can rewrite the story. And that is where the episode ends. Now, a couple things I want to point out. It was fun seeing the characters go back to their quote-unquote regular lives before He Who Remains plucked them out of their individual lives. Uh, that was cool. Owen Wilson is awesome. His chemistry with Tom Hiddleston remains, no pun intended. Um, Sylvie's character is, is pretty great. She now realizes that all of reality could be destroyed if they don't fix this. Uh, they have to do what they can. And besides all of that, you know, I, I like the episode. There were some things that I thought were a little bit goofy with Marvel logic. I understand that. You know, I understand that Ob, whose name is like Ad Doug or something like that in this version, I understand that he's a very highly intelligent individual. But for him to just create a tempad out of nowhere, that's a little hard to swallow. Now I know there's been a lot of things in some of these Marvel shows that are hard to swallow. Obviously. Logically, this whole thing is fiction. I'm not going to sit here and, and and say it needs to be realistic because that's not really what we're talking about here. But it does feel like this was a bit too easy. Then again, they do kind of explain it because when OB goes to where Loki and, uh, and Mobius are in the garage of his home... He basically tells him that it took like 18 months, I think he said 18 months, to actually build the tempad to where his wife left him. And that was kind of a funny line because it was so, it was so like goofy. Oh, well, my, my wife left me, but it's okay because I've got, I've got, I created this. He didn't care that much. But, um, you know, he's uh whatever. I lost her, but hey, I, I created history. So, you know, literally he created a way to access history. So uh, there was a whole Alcatraz story too with Casey. It didn't really have much relevance in this. They could have cut that whole thing out because his character didn't really do much, you know. Uh, but the Tempad thing I did think was interesting because it did disappear and they didn't really explain what happened. I thought maybe Sylvie took it uh, and maybe she did, but they didn't really tell us directly what happened but the whole story here like i said the ouroboros thing where he's able to create the temp pad out of nowhere that was a little weird but it wasn't that it, was, it really wasn't out of nowhere they did explain it maybe it fell out of nowhere so they had to put that line in oh no it actually took me about two and a half years or whatever a year and a half year and a half uh so that at least makes a bit more logical sense then again, this is Marvel, so ultimately it might be a dumb criticism, but it is one that kind of stuck in my head. Now, the mission, and I don't know how long the final episode is going to be coming up next week of this season. The mission is to go back to earlier in the time of the TVA because there is a timeline there now. It doesn't just exist outside of the regular timeline. I mean, it does, but there is a start point and an end point is he's going to have to go back to prior to the loom exploding to figure out what's going on. So that makes sense. And what does that mean? That means that my theory about Victor Timely not really being dead is there because Victor Timely, if they go back to before the loom exploded, that's going to mean they're going to go back to before Victor Timely got spaghettified. So he's coming back. Miss Minutes is coming back and we might end up seeing the Red Slayer saga come to an end or continue in the next episode. So I am excited. There was that Variety article that came out about Marvel. I'm going to be covering details on that and what I think about it probably sometime this weekend. I haven't really had a chance to look at it, but I know it's been the hot topic all over YouTube about this Variety article about Marvel seemingly, you know, being dismantled spaghettified in some ways right ironically enough so that is something that i am looking forward to seeing um you know to, to talking to you about and i'm looking forward to next week's season finale because we'll see where it goes because one of the things that was said in the variety article from somebody who claims to have seen the last episode is that they don't know how they're going to be able to get back this kang storyline so i don't know if if, they, if that means that they actually beat the Kangs, or if that means that something happens that doesn't make any sense. I don't know. There's a lot of possibilities here, but we got one more episode to go, and uh, this show, while not quite as intriguing as it was season one, 
is still the best thing Marvel has on Disney Plus when it comes to those shows. It just is. I mean, it blows away everything else I've seen. Anyways, man, like the episode, hoping for a good finale next week. You know, I'm not going to crap on Marvel entirely yet. I'm not because, yes, they've done some garbage in Phase 4 and 5, but I am hopefully improved because they've done such a good job for the first three phases. I hope they fix these problems. Anyways, that's it, y'all. Have a good one. See you next time.